This is a very expensive 80 pound box and what it contains is the Willwood Aero 6 Big Brake Package for our 2007 Silverado. Are these worth the investment? We'll find out. Do I have any idea what I'm doing? Absolutely not. But today we're putting them head to head to see are these big brakes that much better than the stocks that are on that truck? And a big mahalo to our sponsor, AG1, for making this all possible today. Let's go. So here is our game plan. We're gonna accelerate to 60 miles an hour with slam on the brakes at this yellow line and see how far it takes us to actually stop this slightly heavy pickup truck with worn out stock brakes. Does that sound good? Good. Here we go. And everything we got. Oh, oh, oh. Man, these brakes are bad. <laughs> There's run number one. Try this again. And everything we got. All right, a little bit better. A little bit better. Oh. <laughs> Not that much better. We'll take it. I'm not too happy. And marking number two. I would say that's relatively consistent. That's a good thing, right? <sighs> There's our start line. So we got quite the hike to make. Stock brakes. I don't know if this thing's gonna reach, it's 100 feet. All right, we're gonna have to do this twice. 127 feet from 60. That's uh, quite the distance. Now the whole goal with this is to improve that, which I'm pretty certain we're gonna do. But keep in mind, the rear brakes on this are just drums. Stock drums, don't bust my coconuts too much. We're gonna be upgrading the front. Eventually we'll get to the rear, but we're gonna see a night and day difference, I hope, between the stock brakes and the Willwoods. Let's get back to paradise and start working. Do you hear that? Something's shifting on the front end. We gotta track this down first. Gosh dang it. Life insurance up to date? I think you get a year of my salary if I die. It's not, not It's not much. This is why I do YouTube on the weekends. Straight forward, straight backwards. Don't try this at home. I know I'm at home. Backwards. Break. 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 driveway so much. Let's go in there. Get up on your feet, this is a shakedown. Order up that beat just like a shakeout. Now, before we start playing with our high performance brakes, I want to say thank you to our high performance sponsor, AG1. Now, what AG1 is, is a comprehensive daily nutrition made powerfully simple. And it's actually something that I've integrated into my day-to-day -day life. Just like high performance vehicles that need good fuel to keep it running right, your body is probably the most high performance machine there is on this planet. So why wouldn't you give it the fuel? that it deserves. In my AG1 is 75 whole food sourced ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, aptogens. It's a simple routine dedicated to your health and your body will thank you for it. Personally, I've seen a lot better performance recovery when it comes to my workout. On top of that, sustained energy is very important. I have a very demanding career. I have two kids, a wonderful wife, and I do this stuff on the weekend. So as you can imagine, a lot of energy goes into it. And this helps me stay energized throughout the day and I don't crash at night. Now there's a link right here or at the top of the description below to get started with your order of AG1. Now if you use that link in the description, you can get yourself an entire one year supply of vitamin D3 and K2, as well as five free travel packs with your order. Check them out guys, support the brands that support this channel, make all of this possible. Mahalo again to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Let's install some brakes. Let's go. Get up on your feet. Warning, should only be installed by someone experienced and competent. This is a shakedown. Order up that beat just like a shakeout. Show me you got soul. 
inside those new shoes And you can rock and roll with an attitude So good, so fresh, just the way you like it Get serious, guys. <laughs> I love this. I don't know about you guys, but I grew up watching TV shows like Overhaul. And I think my dream when I grew up was to be the next Chip Foose. But yeah, here I am on the weekends on YouTube. Anyways, watching that TV show, I always saw brands like Willwood, like Dynamat, these high-end brands being featured with all those builds. And I wanted someday, one day, an install on my truck. Brands like that. So here we have the Willwood 6 Piston Aerolite 6R Front Brake Kit. 6 piston calipers, slotted and drilled rotors all the hardware and we also bought a few different lines given we have a long travel suspension and those lines have to be quite a bit longer than your stock truck and as you can imagine i'm a little bit i'm quite a bit excited and i got this entire kit actually from four wheel parts i ordered it online on 4wp they had the best deal out there and it got to me pretty dang quick so that is our kit that is the truck and this is the idiot installing it let's go was a lot of work. What we did over the last, call it hour and a half, was retorque everything and also add red thread lockers. So the hub bolts came out, but I discovered that top hub bolt can't come out unless you remove the lower ball joint. So we did that, removed all the hub bolts, added red thread locker, torqued all those to 130. We got our lower arm torqued in as well as our upper arm. So I'm feeling a lot more comfortable now than I did previously because of the issue we had with our brake bolts falling out. <laughs> So now that the passenger side is ready to go, it is finally time to kind of dig in here to see what we are doing. We have our top hat, which goes onto the rotor. These are torqued in at a very specific inch pounds. We also have our six piston calipers, as well as the adapter bracket. But we knew this moment was coming, but I didn't expect it to be with the first part that we're gonna be bolting onto this truck. So we're already having clearance issues. So we have this caliper bracket adapter plate from Willwood and it's supposed to mount up right there. This is an aftermarket spindle from CWF Off-Road, the folks that made this long travel suspension kit. These don't fit. It's close, but we need, we need a quarter inch. So as you see there with the yellow marker, all we had to do was clearance that just it's probably- tires, tires. Tires over there. A bike there tires? No, tires are good. Tires Yeah, tires are good. Yeah, tires are good. So the good news is our step one can finally be completed. We'll get some paint on here to protect this as well. So all we had to do was round out this a bit more. On this side, we had to take off probably a quarter inch on the inside here, so we just rounded that out. Ta-da! Did you eat a blue lollipop? Yeah, blue lollipop. Yeah, your mouth is blue. These are actually for this, and what we're gonna be doing is bolting our rotor onto this hat from the back side. We'll get our rotor bolted onto our hat with our bolt set here. Red thread locker to go through this side, 140 inch pounds. Problem number two, this one's a big problem because those don't fit. The brakes are so large that the inside inner barrel of these Moto Metal 962s do not clear 
our brakes at all. There's full contact on that caliper bottom and top. The only thing we possibly could do is throw a spacer in here, probably about an inch, inch and a half for it to pull outward to clear the caliper. Just because the way these motomels are made, it's tapered inward just barely, but the inside barrel is a lot further in than the outside, if that makes any sense at all. So it's making contact with the wheel woods. That's a problem. So there's two things we could do. We could run the spacer, which probably isn't wise. Or option number two is to steal my wife's wheels and tires. The Trail Boss has 20 inch wheels with 35 by 13 and a half tires. So it is a bit heavier setup. But when we do the pre post brake test, it will be putting the brakes to the test because the rotating mass is significantly heavier. I did run inside real quick just to make sure that our fuel wheels that are going on the 37s, which are going on the Makaha Runner, these clear just fine. The inner barrel is a lot different than the Moto Metals. Thank heaven. I am sorry, babe. I'm gonna steal your wheels and tires. Put the ABS wire back on. No! Good morning, new day! Pasture side is done. It took a little bit longer than anticipated because there's a lot of shimming involved in getting these calipers lined up. Put it all together, take it apart, put it together. It's done. So now that we know kind of what we're doing, this should be quite a bit quicker, but we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. We'll pull apart the upper control arm, the lower, get to the hub, add thread locker, retorque everything to spec, and then hook up all the brake lines, bleed the brakes, so on and so forth. I'm not gonna be hired to do any fab work anytime soon, but this side's much better than the other side. Turned out really good. So our bracket fits flawlessly now, so we can get that bolted up. Also what I'm gonna do on this side, which I forgot to do on the other side, is my ABS wire. Back to the hub before I install the brakes. So what's pretty cool, but also time consuming about this Willwood kit is they include a whole lot of shims. So between the bracket, the caliper, and the rotor, you use shims top, bottom, left, right, just to get it centered up and perfect. And on the other side, the magic number was two shims. It's kind of fun, it's like how old hand-built cars were made back in the day, a whole bunch of shims. All right, that was kind of a pain in the butt. This has been the last hour and a half of my life. Essentially, I want to utilize our FlexLine kit. The length of it makes me a little bit concerned when it comes to full droop and that full turn. So what I did actually was to flip the brake line bracket from the other side. And then when I mount it, I actually flip it upside down, which actually gives me an additional few inches here. Long story short, I took this from the other side, cut off the tab. We have brake line, we have connection, figured it out. side done still got to bleed the brakes but time to do my shenanigans over here flip the bracket drill the hole put the new hardware in and then get covered in brake fluid let's do this been an hour and a half we've been chasing our tail for an hour and a half Found the culprit. This is part of the flex line kit. It goes in the backside of the caliper and actually hooks the hose up to your stock location. The only issue I had with both of these, they wouldn't bleed. No fluid would get into the caliper. I tracked it down to, in fact, being this little 90 degree. It looked like a product defect where it wasn't drilled out all the way. You could not even blow through this. This little thing. I've been chasing a product defect for an hour and a half. Back again, guys. Story of my life. Here we are two and a half days later and with an overnight Package next day air, three days later. We have the pieces we need. There was no pathway through that 90. You couldn't blow through it, you couldn't get water through it, couldn't get anything through it. I ordered two new ones from Summit. $9 part, $40 shipping. Moment of truth. You can blow through it. Unlike the freaking two I had in the kit. Brakes are bled, boys. It's amazing what happens when you have parts that are not 
defective. It went absolutely smoothly. Before we can actually slap all this back together, steal my wife's shoes. when it does this. This is how humid it is in Texas. It hasn't rained a drop, but my entire garage is soaking wet. Texas weather. All right, it's time for our maiden voyage. We didn't die yet. Guys, the brakes are phenomenal. I say this a lot when I go from my ZL1 back to either this truck or the Trail Boss. I come in a little too hot on most stop signs and almost past the stop sign because the ZL1's brakes are so good. When you hop back in a heavy truck, it just naturally is a big difference. But the only way I can describe these brakes right now is they feel like the ZL1's brakes. So last night we went on a long drive, did the full bedding process that Willwood recommends. We went ahead and drove the truck all the way to work today, checked all the fittings and the reservoir before we left, haven't lost a drop of fluid, which was a relief, but don't leave yet because we have the ultimate test or the final test to see truly how much better they are than the stocks. I can guarantee they're better. I can feel it in my foot. But 127 feet was the stopping distance from 60 with stock brakes. See how much better our front wheel woods are now. All right, there's stock brakes. And all the way over there is where we tried to stop. All right, here goes round two. That's where we stopped the first time. I'm hoping it's quite a bit further back next time. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. goodness. Woo. That was intense. Oh, those are gorgeous. Man, not only do they look good, they stop impressively well. From 127 feet to 114 foot stopping distance. On top of that, we've added a significant amount of unsprung weight. These wheels and tires, these 35s, weigh a ton more than the 33s we pulled off of there. This thing's as slow as a turd now with all this weight on the wheels and tires. However, we can actually stop a lot better than we used to. That is over half a truck length. Oh, it's gorgeous. That's a dream, boys. That's the dream. Buy some land separate myself from the rest of humans. So these brakes actually feel better now than they did on the way here because the brakes and roads are still kind of getting broken in. The bedding process is somewhat still happening. So if I did that run again, I would likely improve upon the 12 and a half feet shortening and stopping distance than we just got. That's over half a truck length on top of heavier wheels and tires. That rotational mass that these brakes are having to stop is significantly higher now with the 35s. That is clear proof the brakes are better but it feels way better. It just feels good. Willwood for the win. Let's go. I don't know about you guys, but I'm stoked on these. They look amazing. They feel amazing and they perform simply amazing. I am very happy with this purchase, but as my father has always told me, the only thing more important than going fast is being able to stop. Because as a wise man once said, speed has never killed anybody. Suddenly becoming stationary, that's what gets you. And this is gonna help me avoid that situation. I'll put a link in the description below for this particular kit. It does cost a pretty penny, but this purchase would not be made possible without you guys watching these videos. I am so truly grateful to the bone for you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. We have a ton happening a lot sooner than I think, just beyond that fence line because we just got a letter back from the HOA. It's gonna change things a little bit. And right on cue are my old shoes. <laughs> and a slightly cross wife about the shoe swap because I didn't tell her till this morning. We'll catch you guys in a few days for our next video. Until that day comes, as always, y'all take care. Ahoy ho, aloha. Ooh.